So tree diagrams, this is a nice way to end up this topic. Tree diagrams you should be pretty good at from GCSE. There's only like a new part of these tree diagram questions that you will be coming across, um, which is the stuff to do with conditional probability, the given that kind of things. So I'm not going to spend too long on the, on the basics of tree diagrams. The thing I'm actually really interested in down here is part B of the question. Part B of the question is where, where year 13 maths comes in. Part A of the question is, is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to just go through the beginning of this bit quite quick. You've got two bags, the first with fed, with fed, the first with five red balls and five blue balls. The second one has got three red and six blue. You first pick a ball from the first one, place it in the second. You then pick a ball from the second bag, complete the tree diagram. So there's some interesting things that's happening here. Okay? You pick from the first, you put it in the second. That's an important fact because you're taking one thing from one place, putting it somewhere else, it's obviously going to change the probabilities, which means that the probabilities are conditional. So they're not independent, they're conditional from each other. Um, a little tip that we should do here is I've said use the variable subscripting. Subscripting is where you do a small number in the corner to indicate what pick you're referring to. So this is picking a red the first time, picking a red on the second time, picking a red, then picking a blue, blah, blah, blah. OK, so what is the probability to begin with that you pick a red ball? It's a half. OK, so it's going to be a half here and it's going to be a half here. Five out of ten. Now, if you have picked a red ball, you're then putting the red ball from the first bag into the second bag. So what you might like to think of for this kind of branch up here, previously there were three red and six blue. But because we've gone up the red branch, there's now going to be four red and six blue. That's if you've already picked red from the first bag, you've now placed it into this bag. So it's no longer three, it's become four because we've added a red in. So the probability of red is four out of ten, which is two out of five. You with me, Sadia? Yeah? Just because you were doing that, you were looking like you wanted to ask a question. Okay, so the probability of blue is six out of ten, which is three out of five. Now, these are not going to be the same probabilities as on this bottom part here. Why will these not be the same probabilities? Yeah, because this one, we've taken a blue bag, a blue ball from the first bag, and we're putting it into the second bag. So for this one down here, we've taken blue, and we're going to put it into this. So it's no longer going to be three red and six blue. It's going to be three red and seven blue. It was six blue but it's now changed to seven blue because we've put blue in there. So the red on the second pick will be three out of 10, and the blue on the second pick will be seven out of 10. Now there's nothing really I can teach you here other than read the question, think really carefully. If you need to, jot some extra things down so you're not doing it all in your head. I wouldn't have done this in my head. I would have written this down because I wanna make sure I'm being perfect. You don't want to do something and make a mistake, OK? We always want to be perfect. So we're going to try and find the probability that you pick a red ball on your second pick. Now, to find the red ball on the second pick, there's a few ways that you can pick red on the second pick. Can you describe to me the ways that you can get red on the second pick? OK, so red first, red second, blue first, red second. So to pick... Uh, a red ball on your second pick. So in other words, the probability of R2 is equal to the probability of picking a red on the first one and then a red two on the second one plus the probability of picking a blue one on the first one and R2, like this. Red one and red two is a half times two fifths. B1 and R2 is a half times three tenths. So you get a fifth plus three twentieths, which is seven twentieths. So you just need to make sure that you're collecting all of the possible routes that will end you up to get red on your second pick. So we did this route and we did 
this route, multiplied the probabilities and added them together. As you know from GCSE, nothing new there. This is the bit that's a little bit different, so I'll spend a, a short amount, a little bit of time on this to explain clearly. It says, given that your second pick was red, that the first pick was also red. So find the probability that given that your second pick was red, that the first pick was also red. So how would I write that in probability notation? I'd write P, what would be the first thing? R1, 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 R1 U, R2. No, not you. No, no, no. Given R2. Whoops. So the probability that, you're picking, that you picked red on the first time, given that you've picked red on the second time. So it's P, R1 and R2 over P, R2. R1 and R2 is what? Um, a fifth, because it's a half times two fifths. All over the probability of R2. Now, the probability of R2, the trick, the thing that people make a mistake in the past that I've seen students do, is they go, oh, the probability of R2 is just two fifths and three tenths. I'll just add those together. But you've already worked out earlier on in the question that it's seven twentieths. They may not have got you to work that out earlier on in the question, so you need to make sure that you've worked that bit out. So it's going to be out of seven twentieths. So it becomes a fifth divided by 7 twentieths, which is 4 sevenths, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Which kind of makes uh, more sense. So let's just let's think about like the logic that goes on behind this, right? You've picked a red on the second go. Is it more likely? that you picked red on the first go or blue on the first go. And it says that it's more likely because it's four sevenths. Four sevenths is greater than half. It makes sense that it's more likely that we picked red on the first go. Why does it make sense just in, in terms of like real life thinking? Why does it make sense that we picked red on the first go if we've already picked red on the second go? Yeah, good, because when I pick a red on the first go, I've increased the chance of there being red there. So it's more likely, if I've picked red on the second go, because you're not concentrating, because that's the entire question. Yeah? Do you, should, we do it, should we read it through again for Rayhan? No, no, no. No, I'm not, trust me, I'm not reading it through again. OK? So you also want to see that it kind of makes sense. So it makes sense that the probability is more than 50%, because that branch made it more likely that red was going to happen. OK? I'm just going to do well, one more of these, but to save time here, I've actually already got the probability, tro probability tree drawn. I think that was part B of the question, was to draw the probability tree. So here it says, on a randomly chosen day, the probability that Bill travels to school by car, bicycle, or on foot is a half, a sixth, a third. So we've got a half, a sixth, a third here. The probability of being late when using these methods of travel is a fifth, two fifths, and a tenth. So which of those is the most unreliable mode of transport? For being, for being late or not late? For being, well, which is unreliable means, foot is the most no, reliable. reliable. Because it's only got a tenth. Yeah? So bicycle, bicycle, 40% of the time when he takes the bike, he's late. So I don't know what he's doing on the bike. But, um, <laughs> So you just want to always try and understand what's actually happening in these questions. Don't just look at it as numbers. It's always interesting to try and think, what are the numbers meaning? Because you might get given a question where you need to model something. And that's where you'd think, OK, well, if this is a bigger number, then this would mean this kind of thing here. So we just want to break down what the question says. It says, given that Bill is late, find the probability that he did not travel on foot. So what does that look like as a probability statement? F not given L. So it's funny because the way the sentence works, it's like in the reverse order. It says, given that Bill is late, well, that comes second. Find the probability that he did not travel on foot. So not traveling on foot is here. Now, that must be equal to probability of F not and L over L. 
Okay, so if we want to find out these different things that we've got here, we have to be careful at extracting the information. Which is easier to find, the numerator or the denominator? The denominator. No, the numerator is easier to find, I think. Why? Well, because the probability of late, you have to do... You have to do this, you have to do this, <coughs> and you have to do this. That's for the probability of being late. The probability of not going on foot and late, well, we can work that out from there. So it's just two of them. Or, no, we'll just do two of them. It's better to do two of them. I was going to say you could do one minus, but we'll just do it the safe way, OK? Um, so let's actually just go straight in with the question. The probability of not going by foot and being late could be this one and this one. So that's a half times a fifth. Plus, the other way of not going on foot is bicycle and late which is a sixth times two fifths. And that's all out of the probability of being late, which is this one, this one, and this one. So it's the same thing as on the top. That I think was car, that was bicycle, and that was, the last one is foot. And that's your answer. Okay, but I wouldn't put that in a calculator. I would wanna work this out slowly. So we've got a 10th plus, uh, I'd cancel two that, yeah. two thirtieths or a fifteenth, all divided by, well, I know that's a tenth and that's a thirtieth, a fifteenth, <coughs> and then that's a thirtieth, and then I'd work out the numerator and denominator separately. So we've got a tenth plus a fifteenth, so you've got a sixth, and the denominator is a fifth. which is 5 over 6. I don't know why I was using my calculator there. So the probability is 5 sixths. Does it feel like anything new at all? Yeah. Not really. Yeah, who was just saying yeah? It doesn't feel like anything new, I hope. Um, I hope that you are familiar enough with all of these things from, from year one. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that one on the board. I want you to try this question that you've got here, and then we'll do a couple of questions from 2E. And then we're just going to move on and do year one recap stuff, okay?